Hello and welcome back another week. We get some more League stuff. I'm so excited. I'm filming this one straight after I did uh, the video for the 2024 look ahead, which like very exciting stuff in that video. And then this one will probably be out after the season has changed. I think it's coming soon. So I will be <laughs> probably spending all my time playing that, uh, but like very excited. Uh, to see how that goes, and th that was really fun to hear about the different things coming ahead. Uh, very, very enjoyable. So if you want to go watch me react to that. But today, we've got another Necro video. Uh, the bosses and raids of Riot's MMO. And these MMO videos are not only just really cool or really fun, because they're hyping up what could be in this possible game, but they are giving like such good lore and interesting stuff on different re regions, like areas, peoples. A it's giving... Uh, it's like it's giving a lot of different sort of information which i am enjoying so much uh i'll my my check-in for this week i've been doing like a it's like a diary it's like what have i been up to in league uh been playing a bit more been playing a bit more ranked which has been uh, a scary time because people in rank take the game a lot more seriously and I am still new and I'm not the best still but I'm tr I'm trying my best I'm semi one tricking Milio because he is my boy I love him he is the coolest little character uh love him love his foy amigos <laughs> um and I just I like that sort of, like I love the damagey support and I've been getting more into them because they're really cool and getting to get kills but an enchanter and like healer shielder poker is always going to be my bread and butter so what I enjoy I like making other people do even better and Milio is just fun getting all my uh, items to just like shield heal them and then buff everything else that they can do so they can do great is the best I got um I ranked up since last week because uh, I actually played a lot. It was one of those days I went out last night and I was like, I'm going to have a chill day. I'm just going to play League Ranked, which is probably not good for a chill day. But I had a great time. So I am now Platinum 4. It, whatever the bot bottom one is. So that's exciting. Still feel in over my head, but I'm trying my absolute best. And that's what I wish the toxic people <laughs> in my games knew. They are like, abuse the enchant. I'm like... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really trying, I'm just not very good, um, but usually I can, I can do okay, and I feel like there's this big thing, let me know if you agree with this or not, I feel like there is a big difference between playing, like, a supporter type, like, enchanter type support, and doing, like, doing the same sort of thing, like, doing fine on either of them, or a damagey type support, you get way more flamed if you do any sort of mistakes on a damage support because like you're not optimizing everything but when you're making other people better it's like they don't notice anything they're like well because i'm doing well because you're supporting me even if we're both doing okay that's so much worse i don't know it's a weird sort of thing it's a it's a thing that i've been i don't know i've been thinking about it a lot especially i played one game as Valkars. i didn't do the best but oh my god my ezreal was flaming me everyone started flaming him it's one of those things where everything just turned to chaos uh good fun though <laughs> but yeah milio is my guy last thing if you hear a buzz it's my fan it's like a thousand degrees in my house at the moment so just i hopefully i'll get it oh if you see me sweating that's it who knows this could be a really sh <laughs> intense uh boss video but it's probably from the heat so if you see me sweating just like pay it no mind i'm not dying i hope <laughs> i'm just sweating because that's boiling hot but for now uh we'll get into this video like and subscribe that would be fantastic and let's watch the bosses and raids of Riot's MMO. Oh, I should. Well, hello there. Hello. It seems like people really enjoy it when I talk about things covered in deep layers of copium. Now, okay. don't get me I, wrong. I mean, I, I don't enjoy think we're copium that much. Just so your far, videos. They're very good. A single thing. I am simply presenting things that already exist. Yes. And as my videos got and traction, that could I started be. getting some valuable feedback. So before we begin today's video, okay. let's have a look at some of the things you just had to point out. Oh god. For those of you who believe we are starting unhealthy hype, it's fine. No. As long as we all understand that we are dealing with hypotheticals. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. By the that. time it comes out. 
I also got to interview the person who wrote the upcoming massive League of Legends novel. Who oh, was interesting. Who now be working on the MMO. Oh, that would and be cool. And he told me that, yes, my videos are being passed among the developers. That's so amazing. That is them so now. cool. Also, that novel <laughs> Stop is tagging them. It's Game of Thrones in League of Legends. That's really cool. I am cool. excited for the potential lore of the MMO. Amazing. Next, um, yeah, I am wearing my slippers out of my own volition. Yes, oh. uh, shamans can shift in this universe, just like druids. And yes, Riot confirmed that Legends of Runeterra, which is the card game based on League of Legends, okay. is a big inspiration when it comes to the world building. Really? In case you're wondering what Interesting. this is about, all the art I am showing you comes from Legends of Runeterra. A oh, game that cool. secretly acts as a massive archive of art that reveals this universe. It has art? Anyway, Shit. after covering Maybe the I world should get into and it. all the races and classes, the Lord Great videos. Support, Great videos. Been enjoying. Potential end game bosses of this MMO. Uh, this is really now cool. I, I do want to see this. You're thinking. This game isn't even in the playtesting phase. How can we talk about the raids? Because well, they already see, exist. That's because Riot was probably thinking ahead of time. Yeah. And they started a bit of a meme in the lore community. Oh, they? They gave this universe way too many world ending threats. They really the did. We have learned about so that, much. Yeah, the Darken, the Void. Oh know my god. Which world ending threat was the real world ending threat? <laughs> What's the it biggest was a battle problem? Between who's the <gasps> Hi, Velkos. But the benefits are obvious. You have a lot of meaningful enemies that you can remove before you start limiting your storytelling. And in fact, many of these big storylines are written with all the back doors open. Yes, So that fantastic. in the future they can utilize them for an event in League of Legends. And like if you had... Or it is stories that were left open purposefully for the MMO. If you had certain and characters, like this you could have them in... About. Like the big, big bosses in the to MMO, show you 10 surely. Ten storylines that were left open and which would ten storylines. But if you look at the length of this video, yeah, I cut it down to only seven. So oh, okay. <laughs> And it's a long video. We're Since strapped we are in. Essentially talking Make about sure you have some water. League of Legends, especially if you have seen our last two MMO videos. I have. I it did my research. It goes saying that this world has material for hundreds of instances. And this hundreds of hours really of gameplay. To, to cherry pick which ones they want to do. This is and really cool. And since in this video I am only going to mention seven of these, seven. it is highly likely I am not going to mention the one that you would like to see. Oh, okay. But if you feel strong no, about I don't... your own idea do about you... the dungeon... Well, I think a dungeon, and this I don't think this could work, but feedback for a void dungeon platform. would be sick. Anyway, the seven like seeing the void. I are based on one simple fact. Oh, their stories what is and that setting be? are perfectly fit for a raid and Oh, okay, fantastic. Be it because their stories are That's why I think the void finale, would make sense. Or because some of these villains already have a cast of supporting bosses for the raid. Oh, cool. Or simply because the battles would be really cool <laughs> and because simply because half of them are already telling, bosses let's start with the first raid okay one with such a good setup the raid essentially writes itself it's already done it's already done of mount dargo oh that as is sick remember, how mount yes dargo you could climb the mountain the celestial god to surf as a gate and you have the, the sideways frozen rivers. rivers and people decide to climb this place for a variety of reasons even though only about 1 in 10,000 makes it to the peak, some people try oh, to climb the cool. mountain because they want to be deemed worthy and become a celestial demigod, while, for example, the Marcians send their criminals here to die trying <laughs> to climb the mountain. I forget this about that. This sentence is called the Crown of Stone. The Crown and yes, of, stone. of course, you can't really force the criminals to climb the mountain unless but... you go there with them. Oh, so okay. So most criminals just flee and start a new life elsewhere. Oh. Also, at Good the for them. of the mountain, we can find Aurelian Soul. If that a was a Lord. final boss, the that would be why sick. The reason he is here is because Imagine. of the crown he is wearing. Long story short, it reminds me of, um... years ago, when people noticed that I'll Aurelian think about it while was he crossing talks. the stars, they started worshipping him, which boosted Aurelian's uh, ego. One of the dragon, and um, they crafted him a crown dungeons of celestial in Elder Scrolls Star Online. Men. Aurelian, already being quite egoistic, donned the crown, only to realize it was, was a trapped. controlling device. Oh my god! In reality, it was the celestial aspects who wanted to hold Aurelian's power the entire time. 
Now, to be fair, the Aspects are using Aurelian's powers for good cause. Yes. They are using his Celestial Fire to purge the Void from Runeterra. And close but the rifts, still, right? it is the Celestial Aspects who enslaved Aurelian. Okay. Anyway, Riot can make up a billion reasons why we should raid this place. Though I, I mean, doubt we would be able glory. to find Aurelian Soul at the very peak. No, that you would know, be cool though. Of space. But, but maybe we need to reach the peak to borrow some of his powers. Oh, or maybe cool. we need to kill a rampant aspect. Or maybe we just need to reach the celestial realm for another reason. Yes, or fight Simply any said, random it is celestial. Easy to make up a reason for this raid to exist. Agreed. What's more interesting is the setting of this raid. At different levels, the mountain presents you with different enemies. Oh, so let's cool. start with what would happen once you enter the raid. Okay. You start at the would you have the mini bosses where too? You are very likely to meet Chip. Chip. Chip is an already established character who shows newcomers the wonders of the mountain. Oh, Chip's so adorable. So you follow him around. Until okay. We at least we at didn't have to kill boss. him. The living mountain itself. Oh, that would be this sick. This place has plenty of earth elementals who came alive due earth to the elementals. mountain's magic. Now, as I say this, okay, don't confuse hell yeah. the earth elementals with Malphite. Malphite okay, I comes will not. from Ishtal, which is quite far away from Targon. Yeah. Also, he's a good guy. We don't want to fight him. Yeah. But from the earth elementals who would likely protect this place. We have, for example, the Blue Sentinel, who oh. also appears in League of Legends. Yes, but you get the, the buff. biggest of them all is the Stonebreaker. Oh, this one shit. would be an excellent introductory. Oh, boss. that would be you a know, sick mini boss. The mountain itself. Oh my god. And yes, I know he's a bit too big, but you can shrink him for gameplay purposes. Or you just do the While thing where you like kind of just shoot his head. Boss sizes that would be cool. It's fine. Because, like, anyway, you, like, he's huge and does big attacks, but you just fight his head. And suddenly, we start meeting all the lesser dragons and their worshippers. Lesser dragons. The coolest of these are the white flame dragons. What? There flame is dragon. also an important dragon who serves as a beacon to the other dragons called Invialis Vox. Invialis Vox. But the one that Vox. would likely become a boss would be the Eclipse Dragon. That's oh, because this wow. dragon is quite precious to the natives on the mountain. How which beautiful would be it looks. Boss number three. Boss you number see, three. further up the mountain, we start encountering the tribes. The there tribes. are the Lunari who hide in and the, the Solari. They are being suppressed and they are relatively friendly. Yeah. Just like the Rakor. But okay. the Solari are fanatics who blindly protect the celestial realms at any cost. Even in the cinematic, you can see how they are protecting the gateway that is leading to the peak of the mountain. And even though it would be cool if Riot allowed us to fight Leona herself, yeah, champions in cool. League of Legends tend to wear pretty thick plot armor. Yeah, so instead, they would die. It would die. be cool if we could fight one of Leona's champions. That would the be cool. The one known as Daylight Spear, Ooh, shit. Raboon. Anyway, after defeating the Solari, but you could just do one, if you added characters from League, feet. you could do one of those things the where one to they don't die. You just defeat the them. Infinite Mind Splitter. Whoa! This is a legendary draconic creature with a very unique ability. It okay. is told that its gaze gives you so much knowledge and insight that your mind crumbles beneath. Oh, I it. need so a little bit this though. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Getting buffs from it. While being careful not to get too many buffs, oh, because it don't would look kill at it. Yeah, and that's then, cool. And then, after getting past the infinite Could do, like, glares. Later, we would arrive at the last stand of the mountain, the arbiter of the peak, the Ooh. last guardian standing in the center of the peak, separating mortals from the celestial realms. Amazing. This is Imagine that guy that trying to stand on you. Who <laughs> the time oh my lord. Celestials. In fact, that's what you can see here. Oh he my God. is guiding Tiari the Traveler to the Celestial what Realms, if he just kicked where you off? become <laughs> the Traveler. But oh my God. Wait, that looked like Genos from Paladins. The Arbiter serves as a guardian they have their own sort of Ascension Arbiter. thing. It's a whole parallel. Two things could happen here. Either we fight the Arbiter to get its approval to pass into the Celestial Heavens. Yes. In this case, perhaps the Arbiter can test us with the lesser Celestial beings. Ooh. Or we simply have to destroy the Arbiter. In this Ooh, case, okay. the Arbiter would probably fight us with the Golems. And finally, perhaps after beating the Arbiter, we are granted access to the Celestial Realms. And while, again, I doubt I we would still be able fight to fight Aurelian Soul, Soul, that would be perhaps cool Perhaps we could fight one of his creations that is endangering the world. 
We have two of them. Couldn't you v- it, like fight the a like first version of him? Is simply known as <clears throat> the Great Beyond. The Great Aurelian Beyond. Soul himself calls it his magnum opus. Magnum this is essentially opus. a smaller celestial dragon created in Aurelian's image. So this would be like fighting Aurelian himself, or except his child. this would make sense. The one I believe might be a bit more appreciated, however, okay. would be the one known as the Scourge. Oh, it looks this like a Hydra. a celestial <coughs> created by Aurelian himself, but League of Legends players might recognize this is it one the as Rift the Herald? pure celestial version no. of Baron Nasher. Baron it Nasher, that's it. I never remember his name. Baron was born out of the pure image. So, oh, the Scourge they being look the similar. final boss would be a really cool nod towards the League of Legends community. That's so See cool. See what I mean? I just made up a 7 boss raid in a heartbeat. Yes. And I skipped a lot of details just so this video wouldn't be too long. Oh god. There are the Celestial Beasts, the Demons trying to consume the Heavens, what the, the fuck? Dragon Roost near the peak. Do I need to play Dragons Legends of Runeterra? Apparently. Hounds, I want to see these images. The Breath of the World. And so Breath on. of the world. Designing this raid was simple because the lore and the setup is already there. That's crazy again, how much I stuff did not they have going on. Up. All of this already exists in the universe. Amazing. And Runeterra has a lot more places just like this. This one, oh, so, I want to say this is my favorite already, but it's my first one, but it just looks so cool. I love like, the, the one star raid aspects. I know as a fact people would love to see is a Darkin raid. Yes, you can that would pull be this cool. off in a lot of different ways, but since the roots of the Darkin lore are in Shurima, the Shurima. raid would most likely be in the deserts. Cool. Super quickly, like, in case like you a forget, tomb raider. The Shreeman Empire rose to power after it started using the sun disk to yeah, reflect should, celestial and then magic it made the people into their better. soldiers yeah. and turning them into the god warriors known as the Ascended. Yes. The Ascended were guaranteed immortality. However, their minds were as fragile as they so were before. They're, they're all the ones that are like the Egyptian the gods. the void beasts released by their neighbors, they started going a little bit mad. Oh gosh, But yeah. their minds finally snapped when their emperor died too and there was no one to give them directions. The story goes that a Darkin known as Zolani, who used Zolani. to be a great healer, Invented a great blood healer. magic and used it to heal the other Darkin. What? Which Put her in. Make her a support. Magic, That's so cool. With a secret plan to use the blood magic later to control them all. Interesting. This was Zolani's secret plan to stop the rampaging Darkin. Unfortunately, the Celestials noticed that the Darkin were very okay. dangerous. And they started sealing them inside special weapons. Oh, the sad part cool. is, Zolani herself was also sealed inside oh, her blade. Damn it! So since Zolani was sealed away, I there see was him. nobody to control the others. And as a nice bonus, the remaining Darkin were now empowered with blood magic. Fortunately, yeah, they're just the end, better than they are. still sealed all the remaining Darkin inside their weapons too. But stupidly enough. The Celestials let mortals to safeguard these Darkin weapons. Yeah, you never so let people course, do anything. Some Come on. Were tempted to pick Bloody up the Celestials. And use them for their wars. At which point, the Darkin immediately dominated the minds and bodies of, of those the person. who picked them up. Yeah. So, yes, these rampaging god warriors managed is that to free Atriox? Themselves. And that looks like. So is it now, Kane who has the side? Let's go through those who would serve as big raid bosses. Okay, I can't Perhaps wait to see. Perhaps the most famous one, and as far as we know, the most powerful one is. Aatrox. Aatrox. After yeah, Aatrox that would be a away, cool his battle. Blade was picked up I by mean, a random warrior he in the already north. feels like course, a raid boss Aatrox in game. Immediately dominated well, the when he gets fed, body, that is. And since then, he's been using blood magic to drain the dead around him and Ooh, make himself that is bigger. Really cool. That's what you can see in his old cinematic. He starts small but gets bigger the more things bigger, he kills. scarier. In fact, I'm it terrified. Gets to such a point where don't Aatrox know what he does. The only being to ever kill a celestial god. As yes, I mentioned in the last Pantheon. video, Aatrox stabbed someone wielding the power of the aspect of war so hard, the aspect of war was wiped from the stars. That's crazy. So out of all the Darkin, Aatrox is the ultimate end boss. That's Besides cool Aatrox, as. as mentioned, the second love to most see. important oh, Darkin is I want to see Zolani. this game. Now, Zolani has Zolani. not returned yet. 
but Legends of Runeterra is teasing that she might come back in the future. I want also, to see as this a character. Fact, in the most recent cinematic, you can see that Talia and Kaisa arrive in front of the faceless statue of Zolani. Oh, Next, that's Zolani. There is Zolani. Also Varus, a darkin who was sealed inside Varus. a bow inside a well. And he got freed after two hunters fell into the well. So now, Varus's body is actually occupied by three souls. Oh. The two hunters and the darkin. One could say he's the embodiment of two and a half men. <laughs> I love Kane, that show. The Kane one holding the scythe of a darkin known yes. as Ras. I was right. But as far as we know, Kane is pretty good at resisting Ras's power. Oh, so I doubt Ras would be freed. He's also, somewhat in control. Kane is a League of Legends champion. So yeah. in order for Ras to come out, Kane would need to die. And oh. I don't think that's possible with all the plot armor. I don't think they're but gonna do that. But we are still not no. done yet. Next, from the lesser-known Darkin, there is also Horazi, who was sealed inside a small emblem. Who Naganeka looks really of cool. Rita, who was sealed inside a giant ballista. Ooh. As you can see, she looks a little bit like a oh, chicken. Oh, that is yeah, but with a fucking giant trebuchet on her back. Not a trebuchet. What's a? Chicken's body. I guess a ballista. And lastly, there is Tarosh, oh my who was gosh, sealed Tarosh, inside sorry. a massive halberd. The oh, reason wow. why this Darkin raid would work is because all the Darkin have a common goal. They all hate Zolani. They oh. see her as a betrayer who was trying to control them. So in this raid, so we could would we be fight helping the Zolani? Other Darkin as we are trying to get to Zolani. Yeah, and we're trying to free we kill her. her. We would face Aatrox oh, as the final okay, we'd boss. Kill her. Yeah, Since sorry. All the Darkin not, wars began not help. with Aatrox and Zolani starting a civil war. Also, it turns out that Aatrox was the general of all the other Darkin. So killing oh. Aatrox would be the perfect end to the Darkin. I thought you could possibly but help Zolani, right? Because she could Darkin. take control. The next champion in League of Legends might be a dog that picked up a Darkin dagger. And if you're wondering why oh, we would that's how far this, place, this is behind. All, okay. The are pretty one-sided bad guys. But we could be led here by Nasus and Sivir. Nasus is an ascended who avoided corruption, so yeah. he would be likely happy to put down his former brothers and sisters. Yeah. And Sivir is holding the very first blade to be ever used to seal a Darkin. Really? So once again, the lore is already there. Ha they've done we so well. Of what it would look like too. We would Just start creepy, bloody, the cocoon, which look creepy blood magic -y. And later we delve beneath them to where the land is tainted I feel like dark and you could make such death. cool, like, just minion, like, you know, random, like, raid, ads during the, like, Shurima. watch because me, during the raid. The raid I would personally love to see, it is the raid on Nerimazeth. Nerimazeth. A city that is in ruins. Oh. That's because Nerimazeth was the place where Shremans tried to build the very first Sun Disk. This oh. first version failed, and instead of the Ascended, it was only producing the Bakai, which the Bakai. are broken, twisted versions of the glorious Ascended. Oh, and in the end, the things. entire city collapsed onto itself. Oh, After that's that, kind of fucked up, actually. Holy shit. Again, but this time in the middle of the desert. But so now, it made why would we want shitty to people. <laughs> Well, that's because this city is being rebuilt by Zeroth, <gasps> the most Zeroth powerful mage. arcane mage on yeah. Terra, whose body was turned into pure arcane energy by the Sun Disk itself. Why is he Long rebuilding story, it? Long story, shorter. When Emperor Azir was a child, he became friends with a nameless slave. And okay. despite slaves being forbidden from having names, he called him Zeroth. Throughout Seraph. the years, the two became as close as brothers, studying culture and history whenever possible. Oh, Later that's on, so cool. despite his father For hating now. him, Azir became his only surviving son. So unless his mother gave birth to another child, he would become the emperor anyway. Oh, well, shit. in secret, Zerath simply made sure she would not give birth to another child. Usually he did it by corrupting the infant in her womb. Because it turns out, this entire time, Zeroth was trying to break his roots from slavery. Oh. And now he oh, had fuck. the ambition to gain power himself. So okay. he justified these murders by telling himself that he was protecting a friend. Despite oh. his efforts, okay. the queen did give birth to another child. Okay, so he wasn't so doing good Zeroth enough at murder. <laughs> a storm and let lightning kill the queen and the child. 
Oh, Eventually, fuck. all these events led to Azir becoming the crowned emperor of Shurima yeah. with Zerath by his side. Right hand From man. this point on, Zerath was waiting for Azir to finally get rid of slavery. Oh. Which never happened. Oh, he didn't Despite do it. Despite Azir fuck, being the okay. most beloved emperor in history, he allowed slavery to keep going on. Oh, and shit. And that angered Zerath. Yeah, no, At I the can end see of the why. Story, yes. The emperor was chosen to become an ascended himself. But during the ceremony, when the sun disk was focusing its power into Azir's body, Zerath was so full of his BS, he incinerated <laughs> him and forced all the power of the sun disk into himself. Oh my god, he's like, this fuck this guy. In Zerath's body being turned I've into killed your babies, you're energy, not gonna be a the challenge. Death of Azir, and the collapse of the sun disk and the destruction of the entire empire. Yeah. You want to know the twist at the end? If you read the story from Azir's perspective, you learn that he did want to remove slavery. Oh. He just wanted it to be a surprise. In fact, oh, fuck. he even announced it just as Zerath betrayed him. But oh, Zerath already fuck. murdered way too many people, so even though he yeah, really wanted children. to stop, it was too late to go back. Oh, God. So Zerath doomed the entire empire. And yes, because the emperor died, Zerath is also technically the reason why the Darkin exist. Oh. I already mumbled about the lore for way he too has, long, so just He so has so really this. caused the Nasus's downfall of this area. Renekton bound Zerath in a sarcophagus, and he locked himself with Zerath in a tomb. Many years later, scavengers opened the tomb and released Renekton and everyone and jumped out. As I said, Zerath is currently in Nerimazeth. And he Nerimazeth. is actually trying to rebuild the original Sunday. I wonder what We don't for. really know why he oh, is doing okay, it, exactly. but I think it's yeah, safe to nothing. assume that he just wants more power. Oh. But you know what it smells like to me? It smells Fishiness. like a big old setup for a future raid. Yes, in it does. Legends of Runeterra, you can see cool. Zerath with all his worshippers. You can also see all the minifests like, around him. Especially we know about mages. Demi Yin, the Unbound. But Ooh. besides all of these heralds and acolytes, this raid would also have the Bakai. The, the Baka original oh, the people who got changed. Who yep, 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 got it. City. But also, we would fight Renekton himself. Whoa, would we? Because he would out be there? Hundreds of years of being locked did they, be in did they become Zerath, friends? Zerath broke his mind by whispering to him that Nasus betrayed him. He purposefully oh. led him to rot in the darkness. That's Shit. why Renekton is quite crazy these days. It all goes I never played to Renekton. Zerath, who might be the ultimate villain of Shurima. Ultimate villain of Shurima, that's For so the cool. Next raid, why Adds a lot play playing Zerath. Of the of Arcane? No spoilers, don't worry. Okay, Previously, that's okay, I I've seen about it. The city spilt over and zone, I Built showed you that at the very bottom of that place, you can find the ruins of an ancient Shuriman city. Yes, and we want to visit there. The one oh, that just a dungeon. an interesting raid would oh. be the Empire of Renata Glass. Oh, that would After be cool. After I mention this, I know a lot of you will be confused. Oh, no, I'm excited. Renata Glass is just Mommy? a rich baron. <laughs> How can she support no. an entire raid? I don't care. Well, I'm case, here for it. It's all built on two factors. Money. First of all, <laughs> Renata is way too big of a character to be removed in just a dungeon. Yeah. But more importantly, cool. Renata Glass released this year. And she was released as yet another big villain. After yes. all the other already established villains in Piltover and Zone, she simply yeah, really she's feels so like cool. a setup for something in the future. Because after I wonder if she'll be in Arcane Season Two. And Ergot and Victor as villains in Zone, Riot yeah. didn't need to make up another. No, it but they wanted to add bloody Chem Mummy. <laughs> I love her though. She is Zorn. cool as. Before her, Zone didn't really have a main villain. So obviously she is now filling that role. Her lore is making her the main boss of Zorn. Oh, cool. Her raid would be very clear. I also forget structure. raids we and dungeons are different. We would follow the detective difference. case of Caitlyn and Vi as we try to find her hideout. Perhaps Camille, an extremely dangerous assassin from Piltover, would be also interested in killing her. From Ooh, that point everyone. on, we would literally raid her place with the Wardens. As oh. a nice bonus, people would Is love that to what see we the champions Zeri and Echo on our side. Yeah, that both would be of cool. Which yeah. are kids from the streets who have destroyed her. Because I'm like, do we really want to just but cosplay the last cops? Piece is, why would we raid Renada? 
That is, well, I am Glask wondering. family owns Glask Industries, Glask which is the Industries. most luxurious brand in Piltover and so on. They ah, sell perfumes and really fancy limb replacements. And, and poisons? And unfortunately, this brand reflects a bit of real life. Since these fancy formulas are okay. developed down in Zon, using oh. slave labor. But oh. there is also a darker twist. All their products are infused with a chemical formula, which Shit, can turn really? their customers into mindless rampaging husks at any moment. Oh. It's kind of like Apple. I mean, now, since it's kind of cool. Is <laughs> champion, Horrible, that's but cool. Her story really has. She is probably the most powerful baron in Zon. Who can oh, make an entire I want, city fall into chaos with I the want to of see her in season and two now so we're bad. Just to see when she would Because we've got an opening for new me, big bad. I normally and, um, wouldn't so think that this would be a great raid, but this would be very different from raiding dragons. Yes. Which would actually give it the benefit you of have to have a very around. like I feel like but you have to have a very remember, different this sort is of raid off of Arcane's fame. And I doubt Riot would pass on that opportunity. Because, like, That's you can't have I all... I feel like you can't have all, like, Renata dragon and monster en MMO. enemies. You have to have, like, a complete different vibe and sometimes. Because sometimes fighting people three is raiders. just as cool. I you know what I mean? I am extremely confident that some form of these will be in the MMO. Oh, these are, these are his, like, sure reasons. bets. First of all, these okay, big villains it. are way too big to be ignored. We are talking Ooh, big, about big characters villains. in the style of Arthas Menethil, but okay. also their lore turns Ooh. them into world-threatening enemies that have to be dealt with. With the first of these being Viego, the Vie Ruined King. Yes, that will there be There is cool. not a sliver of a doubt we will see the Ruined King in the MMO. Like, return? You can point a gun to my head, tell me to guess a villain in this MMO, and I will smile knowing that Viego. I survived. It would no, be it would have unimaginable to, be. to ignore him. Now, the he issue has such lying cool in front of me right now him. is that Viego's story is massive. On top of yes, the normal story true. he has in League of Legends, he got his own book that is 400 pages long. Yes, the entire and he said it was RPG very good. game called Ruined King, which is focusing on his reawakening, and League of Legends got its own in-game event that was focusing on pushing his lore forward, yes. which also included three cinematics. The cinematics right were now, also fantastic. Diego has the most <coughs> lore out of any champion in this universe. That's correct. He's a very. So he seems like a poster it boy. As quickly as possible. It's the like crop jacket on the abs. Prince who was forced into becoming the king at an early age. Because of this, he was not ready to become a king, and many would not consider him a really good king. Oh, oh Still people being weren't happy. a teenager, he often threw tantrums in the style of Kylo Ren. Oh, to keep the <laughs> okay. Crumbling, he relied on his two advisors, Kalista and Nuno Necrit of Camavor. Yes, okay. that's the character named after me. Eventually, Vieta oh, met really? the love of his life. Wait, that's his so own. cool. A I heard about it. Someone he left a comment, but very, I didn't realize that very, would... he'd talk very, about it. Very deeply. Yes. He loved her so much that he would Bit do crazy. anything for her. But she didn't abuse Politely. it. Isolde was actually a very good queen. Oh. For the majority of Viego's ruling, he waved the kingdom's problems away just so he could be with Isolde. Oh, that's Until a bit, the day someone tried to poison Viego to finally remove him oh, from the Callista. throne. And instead they poisoned Isolde. This oh, is shit. where Viego's dark side really started it's to old. show. After trying absolutely everything imagineable, oh, nobody can't was bring able her to back. heal his queen. And Viego's angry depression started taking over him. Oh, After weeks of desperate searching, Viego found out that there may exist a hidden place called the Blessed Isles, the Blessed which Isles. held the sacred Blessed Waters which could heal anything. And so Even he death? sent Kalista away to find the Isles. After a long adventure, Kalista succeeded and she confirmed that the Blessed Waters did indeed exist. Oh, so did on she the next and trip, Kalista it. brought the Queen and the King and their soldiers oh with them. So that they he could just like, heal the Queen and How long has she been after. dead for though? But That's of course, the question. there was a dark twist. The Queen died before they arrived on the Isle. Oh, she was and alive. And the police confirmed that they can heal anything but as death. long as the person is alive. Yep. But that didn't oh. stop Viego from oh. trying. Viego. So after the priests Ooh. denied him entrance to the waters, Viego massacred everyone who stood in his way, and following a creepy warden called Thresh, 
I was he gonna say that looks like the trash. And dunked the queen in. For a Ooh. moment, the waters did resurrect the queen, oh but then gosh. she was turned into a wraith who killed Viego with his own blade, which caused his soul to be absorbed by the blade. I'm oh, skipping a lot of details That's probably here, because so that, yes, you can't heal can a dead person. Souls. <clears throat> we'll actually talk about the blade in the next MMO video, whenever that one comes oh, out. The, anyway, the, after um, Viego was killed with his own blade, and everything exploded in necromantic magic. His queen's soul was shattered into fragments, oh, and shit. the entire place was turned into the Shadow Isles. The Shadow For a Isles. thousand years, Viego's soul stayed there in the blade. Until the pirate king Gangplank was Gang told Plank. by Thresh that he could totally pick up the blade. Oh my His gosh. mind was totally strong really? enough to resist the power of the king. Spoiler alert. It, it wasn't. wasn't. And the moment no, I could have guessed that. Blade, his mind and body was dominated by Viego, who then used that body to fully release himself back into the world. After Ooh. that, even though everyone's been dead for a thousand years, Viego still wanted to bring his wife back. And he's like, and so I'm he started still to hot. I want the my life. With the Black Mist all around the world. In an attempt to find all Ooh, the fragments these, like, of his images are so cool. Eventually, he succeeded, and he actually managed to bring the queen's soul back. I hate. But oof, immediately he looks so much that, more creepy in the cinematics. He was defeated by the Sentinels of Light. Remember yeah. the undead hunting class from the last video? That's them. And yeah. not only did all they them. permanently destroy the queen's soul, because yeah. the queen didn't actually want to be resurrected, no. but Viego's She's been entire dead for story too long. arc ended with him being teleported back to his homeland called yep. Gamavor, and where he was banished until the present days. Yeah. You can and actually stuck see like the that. end of the storyline in the cinematic called Absolution. Yeah, and good, this good is cinematics, why they were really is going cool. to be an incredible boss yep. in the MMO. He does have a lot of story behind him. Yes. But more but important, more story is not this bad. entire time we have only seen his young, reckless personality, where he acts what, like when a he's child. Older, that'd be interesting. As he's constantly trying to help someone he is obsessively in love with. But the thing is, his entire life he was chasing his queen. He was ready to go beyond death just to be with her. But what now, happens when he, he doesn't want to chase the queen after anymore? After learning that the queen didn't yes, want to be right, with that's him, right, that's right. but also after her soul was permanently destroyed. So once Diego is back. unleashed from his prison again, instead of a cocky teenager, we are <clears> going to have a pissed off king who has nothing to lose. Oh, forgot and about that. that. I thought maybe he would have the dark figured his shit is out. Something I really want to see. I want to see. You it can too. only imagine what the raid is gonna look like. Oh, that Lord would be so of risen cool. Kamavoran soldiers, ancient yeah. undead dragons brought from oh his homeland. Oh my god, homeland, necromancy the legendary turned up Rasa to a thousand. The and even more legendary Hecarim of the Iron Order. Hecarim. But there is also Commander Ledros. Or maybe Karthus, the Death Singer. Oh, Karthus. And finally I do Thresh, enjoy Karthus. The one Very who cool. caused all of this to happen. The hidden master of puppets in the shadows. Simply said, Viego has a lot of meaningful enemies serving him, yep. and the raid will be glorious. Oh, and I think it would look Side note, really cool. in the distant future, I kind of want to cover the entire story of Viego. Wish me luck. I For actually, raid, I do wish you luck. That seems like a lot of work, like a lot of work, team. and you already because do <laughs> such a lot of work. Brutal, badass warrior this universe had ever seen. Yes. Super quickly, just for clarity. Thank you. Viego's yep. deathly magic is really undeath in its true meaning. Okay. When he's turning his enemies into undead souls, it's more like he is preventing them from dying. And oh. he's turning them into somewhat living wraiths instead. Ooh, so he's that not doesn't... really the master of death. That doesn't sound As like something see, I want. That title goes to Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser. His story begins the 1v1 the arena man. San Uzal. During his time, the main continents were occupied by barbaric tribes. Sanuzal believed that by Sanuzal. killing as many people as possible, he would please the gods of the afterlife. Oh, and so really? he forged an empire in blood and death. As his That's life was near the end, <laughs> he took great satisfaction in knowing that he would sit at the gods' tables oh. in the glorious halls of both. That's what he believed. However, when he died, he found no glory waiting for him. Ooh, Instead, San Uzal stood in an empty grey wasteland, 
with yep. an occasional soul drifting by. Well, at least you like this. You have an afterlife. Faded into the fog, unmade and lost in time. But San Uzal refused to fade. His oh will, gosh. tempered by rage and torment, held him together. In other okay. words, he was simply too angry to die. <laughs> he started listening oh, to the that's gonna be me. whispers around him, and he learned. I'd be pissed. This I'm, I'm not going yet. Oknun, I've got League to play. The dead. Slowly, he came up with a plan. He began whispering temptations into the veil between realms, oh. promising power to any who would listen. And sure enough, he managed to tempt a few cultists into bringing him back to life. Yeah, well, cult, it's like a big thing. They love that stuff. He told <laughs> the cultists to bind his spirit to metal plates forged in the likeliness of his old armor. Oh, and that's so cool. he rose as the revenant of iron and hate. No longer called San Uzal, but rather in Oknun. He was Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser. Originally, these cultists wanted to use Mordekaiser as a weapon in their trivial wars. Oh, but, but instead, no, Mordekaiser kills listening. them all, and he used their souls to forge himself a brutal mace called Nightfall. Nightfall. With that, Mordekaiser's second conquest of the world started. Oh, but shit. this time, okay. he was wielding necromantic magic. Yes. All his enemies and were confused arenas. because it seemed like Mordekaiser only cared about massacre and destruction. Entire generations perished under his campaign. But in reality, there was far more to Mordekaiser's he, real What, plan. he wanted to sit at the gods' at table still? At the center still. of his empire, he raised the immortal bastion, which became the largest structure on Runeterra. Oh, and he used is it in Noxus? To gather information about I said Noxus earlier. Be it by capturing and studying demons, or torturing yordles until he could harvest their secrets. Oh he did shit! Everything that's in his that's power fucking to depressing, actually. The realms beyond. Not the yordles. Eventually, Mordekaiser became such a tyrant the entire continent banded against him. Oh, but yeah. When Everyone he was loves a good bad. Defeated, it was not because of his enemies. But rather, he was betrayed from his inner circle. Oh, the immortal bastion him? had a secret cabal led by a witch we know as Leblanc. Leblanc. They managed to separate Mordekaiser's spirit from his armor and oh. seal the empty armor in a hidden place. Shit. As a result, without his yeah, physical vessel, Mordekaiser was forced out of the physical realm. What none of the Did cultists he go knew, however, back to the spirit realm? is that all of this was according to Mordekaiser's plan. Oh. The entire time he was forging a destiny greater than the Halls of Bones. When he finally returned to the empty wasteland of the afterlife, Were there other people there? he was met by the hundreds of thousands who died under his reign. Oh. Prevented by his dark magic, they you... would never fade. Did you really they want them there? The eternal army bound oh, to army. World. Okay, that but makes sense. I was going to say, would they the have a lot of revenge? Given purpose. Just like he used the souls of the cultists to forge his maze, the weakest of the souls would become the building blocks of his afterworld. Oh, and so he made his own afterlife? The of the afterlife. And Holy even though shit. he was cast out, with his physical vessel being banished in the immortal bastion in Noxus, he is already planning on how to return. And oh. once he does so, after so many people We're gonna were raid into this his bitch. realm, he would be so powerful, nobody would know how to stop him. But us. Since that is where his story cut off, you know that this is a setup for the future. Yeah, we Even have so much more Legends, to go. Sometimes Mordekaiser is joked about as a raid boss. Once he starts rolling, you need the entire team to get him down. He's, and Riot he's, he's would be one foolish scary not man. to use no, him I as do a know that. raid boss. He, oh my god. He can, any of the tanky characters, they come the at me. Me and shaking in my little Milio boots. When just been like, I don't know what to do. Time, Let's throw my soccer ball at him. Which he used as his companions. This would be Taibo, the giant fire demon, That's and cool. Atakan, an iron bound shadow demon. Atakan. To get to him, we would probably have to get past the one who banished him, Leblanc. Leblanc. And I wouldn't be surprised if we also met Vigar, the Yordle Mordekaiser oh tormented to get his Yordle seat. I can't tell if Finally, I want to play Vigar like or not. Alongside Swain. Oh, One that's cool. I like Noxus, Swain. Who is Swain's actively really trying sick. to root out the dark magics from Noxus. Yeah. So yeah, maybe Mordekaiser's story is not as long as Viego's, but Mordekaiser is built on brutal conquest. Yeah, and His built story to be is a raid boss. simply badass. 
And you bet, that's what people want to fight. Yes, agreed. I want to fight all of and these. I want them all to be real. this raid I want to show you. Is that Lysandra? Not only is this raid or whatever her name is? But it is going to be the final raid before Riot starts to get sweaty about their future. Oh my because gosh. Because from that point on, they would be forced into making up new enemies. Yeah. And that's usually when the lore of MMOs crumbles. Oh gosh, okay. With the okay. ultimate endgame in Runeterra being... The battle against the end of everything. Okay. The Watchers of the Void. The Watchers now, of the Void. Now, I know we already quickly Which summarized the story of the Watchers when we talked about the world. Yes, But we need to quickly do it again because if they get their own raid, it would be a really cool merging of multiple storylines of this universe. Yes, everything Basically, would like collapse Basically, at the beginning of everything, there was nothing. Yeah. Just dark, empty void. And then things happened and Until they hate the light. There was a spark of light. I do like Velkoz's because I've light, been playing a bit of Velkoz. He keeps going like, the light. It's so annoying. It's so bright up here. It's so cool. And now I know what he means by that. Their own existence. Of course, since this first light woke the Watchers up for the first time, since the beginning of time, the Watchers got annoyed and they decided to silence it so they could yeah. sleep again. Let's destroy As the light. As they drifted closer, we learned that this spark was indeed our reality. The so universe. to get rid of the light, the Watchers tried to poke it and taint it. But they were always too big to get through and oh deal gosh. with it themselves. They're just that huge, so which is crazy. So instead, they reached into reality, stole something, corrupted it, and, and released gave it, it back. back. They're like, you know, demon it cow. Would destroy <laughs> the rest of the reality. But even that wasn't too successful. Eventually, the Watchers started whispering into the light. And wanna, the ice wanna witch come, known as <laughs> wanna come Sandra into the darkness? Answered. Come to the, the Watchers dark. promised her people immortality and great power. They're lying, exchange, babes. They asked Lysandra to prepare her world for the coming of the Void. Yeah, turn out In all the lights, behind the take all the fires the sisters, out. She agreed. The Watchers empowered the strongest of their followers and turned them into the Iceborn. Oh, and soon that enough, is cool. the Watchers broke She's a into really cool character too. I really world. enjoy her. With it, Lysandra's allegiance with the Watchers was undeniable. But as the Watchers rose, for the first time, Lysandra got to see how horrifying they yeah. were. Babes, and she realized made a they came made here a big to destroy mistake. everything. In desperation, Lysandra sacrificed her sisters and the Iceborn to use their yeah. magic to freeze the Watchers beneath the ice. But even that magic wasn't enough. Beneath the ice, the Watchers this, were I always love sleeping. that image. They would I think break it's out so cool. should they try to wake up. So these days, what Lysandra is, they like is kidnapping the there. surviving Iceborn. She freezes them in her fortress. She is then using their inherent powers to reinforce oh the ice. And she is feeding their dreams to the Watchers to keep them asleep. Feeding As a bonus, Lysandra is killing anyone who remembers the old days. Oh, and shit. who could spill out that she actually kind of betrayed all humanity. Yes, See, she didn't do a good on job. Own is enough to support a raid. Yeah, Let's I'm already. Say we I'm raid in the Frost Guard Citadel, which is where Lysandra is keeping the Watchers frozen. First, oh, we what get a cool there by place. crossing the whole. All these abyss. images? Are this you kidding is me? This is the bridge that is incredibly iconic for League of Legends Aram. players. This is where you play Aram. Yeah, I bet you cool. never noticed that at the end of the bridge. You can actually see the entrance to the Frost Guard Citadel. Oh. And in fact, the ghastly shopkeeper is one of the soldiers who remembers. I never the get to the end. The I don't think I've ever After won a game of Aram. We would it never goes well. Frozen trolls. These are trolls that Lysandra twisted herself to serve yeah, her. Yeah, that's but why they, they got are also like her by the harbinger horns. of trolls. Whatever that is. Ooh. Then we would that's fight like a through frozen Lysandra's watcher. army of the Drakworn. These warriors Drakhlon. dedicated their lives to Lysandra, knowing that they are protecting the world from the end of everything. Oh. Next, we would face the most mysterious creatures of the A frame. whale? We don't really know what they looked like in the. Oh, that's a horn. <laughs> that's a frozen horn. Like I thought it was a whale. The watchers. And these would be the creatures with their very interesting names. There is She Who Wonders, that They is cool. Who Endure, and who endure. It That Stares. It Whatever the stairs, these they to look be, fucking now they awesome. Are with their eye beam disintegrating reality. Ah, I love a good eye course, beam. Eye beams are sick. Sandra herself before we arrive at the, at the void creatures. Watcher. I think oh, it's likely watcher, that we yeah. are going to fight one of these. 
And what's cool is so that cool. even though this is the toughest enemy this universe has to offer, even if we defeat it, we well, have it to defeat all it's the sleepy. <laughs> That's the clever backdoor of this universe. We can't destroy them all. Yeah, they, they are just the keep coming. Force. There is an endless sea of them. Yeah, if in anything, the darkness. our reality is a parasite in their void. Yeah, so but we don't we want to think about it like that. Watcher, all we really do is plug a hole. But the Watchers oh. continue being a threat. Anyway, yeah. this so we can make endless raids and dungeons and content. It's not really the floating eye that you would imagine. Well, that's because, as it is with all the League of Legends stories, there is a twist. Okay. You see, just as the Watchers are able to corrupt a being, they are also open to being corrupted themselves. Yes. The process always corrupted. comes from both right. sides. And so, the more the Watchers interact with humans for example the more they human like on? they become themselves oh interesting and since the watchers in the front be cool to get a, like a person there for thousands of half years half human legends of runeterra shows us that once they would break half through void creature. that's what they would look like they would have many human like limbs oh okay that is it fur from all the animals fur. and they even have a creepy fake face yeah. So no, because everyone is, is a two-faced like. bitch on our this earth. <laughs> That's why they got a fake face. Also, you might be wondering how do we actually beat the most powerful being in this universe? Chop its legs off. Well. And then head. That's where the stories collide. Stab it in First the eye. First of all, Lissandra would be the key to freezing the Watchers. Oh, okay, She yeah. would have to be on our side at the end there. Okay. Also, the primal god Orn constructed the bridge Orn. leading to the citadel. Yeah. And this bridge was used as a magical seal to help keep the Watchers down there. So Orn himself would help us. Oh, that but would be But most cool. importantly, there is another massive storyline that is in Shrima, centered around a Voidborn known as Belveth. Bell because Beth. this video is already way too long, just we can't super cover quick. it. Oh, you damn know how it! The Watchers themselves got tainted when interacting. I know he has videos reality. on certain characters Down in Shrima, too. a small pocket dimension formed between the Void and our reality. It was sort of like a cancer growth on the Void. In oh, fact, gosh. if you dive deeper into this, you may realize that this is directly correlating to real life cancer. If oh. you don't know, cancer is just living tissue that decided, hey. I don't want to die. And that's exactly what happened here. Oh. As the void started consuming people in Shurima, it got tainted by the people and it formed self-awareness. Soon, because this cancerous growth inside the void needed to represent itself, it grew a creature known as Belveth. The a queen void of this that looks other a bit fishy fish. because she consumed a harbor, but also yeah, she doesn't she looks like, like a the watchers because the watchers want to end everything. And, and all Belveth wants to do is to live. And so these days, Belveth is consuming entire cities at a time. And she is rebuilding everything with the information she got. With her okay. ultimate end goal being to rebuild all reality. So that oh. she could be a reality. And she oh. would be strong enough to fight the Watchers. Interesting. Course, at this time, she doesn't okay. really have all the information gathered. So whenever she is recrafting cities and people, it all looks uncanny. And However, at this point, she consumed hundreds of thousands of people. And she is using oh all of their brain power. So Belveth is very smart. Very now, the reason smart. why this storyline is important is because Belveth this cinematic was wants cool to talk to Daisa. And she offered her a deal. If mortals help Belveth consume reality faster, she would spare them to be the last she would consume. Oh, Bella what? If you don't even get to survive? And she knows that humanity could never beat her. But oh. at least with this deal, well, we she could gave try. them the chance to create a weapon or maybe find a hero who maybe could slay her. She oh. knows they could never achieve it, but she is but willing to give them the chance. And you see, this is where we can get another twist. That's this cool. wasn't confirmed. This is purely my theory. Okay, I tell me. I want to know. There is a way to destroy Belveth. Okay, See, how? Belveth believes that we can't beat her. But the fact is, she used hundreds of thousands of human brains to figure it out. But oh. humans can't even comprehend the power of the Celestials. So, Celestial so I believe Aurelian Soul could destroy her. Oh shit, she does she even know about Aurelian Soul? She just doesn't have the brain power to figure that out herself. 
So what I think is going to happen is that at some point we you are get going celestial to be powers. Back. She realizes she was wrong. She realizes that humanity is stronger than her when fighting the Watchers. And yes. she decides to help us destroy them. Oh, that would so be cool as actually. On the frost Big Stingray star. Mummy on our side. If before that, she scares we me. got another raid where we delve into Belveth's little pocket dimension. That would be cool. And with as. her help, we move to the north. Or, you know, we just destroy her. That would be way cooler. Yeah, either either. So all of I just want to go to her dimension. Theory. Like, the seeing is, the different places we, we could go to. Watchers. That is inevitable. Amazing. And that was all the raids I wanted to show you. All Fantastic. of them are supported by the lore. Yes. And it is up to Riot okay. whether they want to do them or not. Except Honorable the mentions. last three raids. Those are happening. There is no yeah. way around it. Yeah, but well, definitely, we'd have to go to, to like, the Frawley Let Lord. me give you some honorable mentions. Okay, this I want to see This universe also technically has the Grim Reaper. While yes, they Kindred, may have many correct? forms, the most well-known form of death itself is Kindred. We wouldn't really have a good reason to fight them, though. Since no. death isn't really an evil entity in this it's universe. It's just a thing but, that happens. You know, they exist. I would also love to fight against Vladimir's Hemomancers. Oh, Vladimir we could also would be get cool. a raid against on Blood the Magic? Ursine, with Volibear being the final boss. Volibear, the primal that, would be, god of wilderness. that would be cool. In the a raid. East, there is also the mysterious demon known as Ashlash, a seven-handed liquidy demon that is locked beneath the earth in a, a place known demon? as the seventh layer. Interesting. Nira is currently wielding its power, and it looks like a oh. setup for the future. Also, there is she Fiddlesticks, is. the primal and most powerful demon on Runeterra. Fiddlesticks oh. itself is just a puppet. The demon is what you can see inside the cage. Oh, but because Fiddlesticks interesting. is roaming around the world, I couldn't really figure out a raid setting. Yeah, But no, you bet I, we are fighting him at cool. some point. If you want a creepy video to react to, find Fiddlesticks cinematic. Oh no, Simply I loved said, it. It was fantastic. So no, I remember. What I showed you today. And in the future, I can make a smaller video where I cover the dungeons of this MMO. Okay, dungeon All would be theoretical, cool too. of course. But for now, oh yeah, dungeons. That's it. Well, thank you. Oh, I'm running out of content. So let's see. Um, what do we have next? <laughs> but, hey, my question: Why do you hold the lav mic? <laughs> Wait, what do you? Oh. <gasps> Um, okay, that was fantastic. That was really fun. Like, sometimes you're like, long video, but like, it went so quick because I was like, so into all the different sections. Just the thing, wow. I feel like we, we learned so much, even though he was talking about things that are not happening, but that what it supports, like all the different areas, the different the different things surrounding all the big characters in League are so interesting. Like seeing like Aurelian Soul, all the people connected to him, connected to Mount Targon was very interesting. Then going to Sharima and then, you know, the Void Pockets, learning about Belveth and how her void is different to the Void Void, which is like so cool. And then like the city below um, Zorn and Piltover and the city, uh, and the, the, the creepy Mordekaiser below Noxus. These things are just so interesting and cool to learn and find out. I just have like the best time sitting there going what <laughs> what the fuck I don't know like they all they are already raid boss characters in league because they're already so when they get built and fed are so scary and just imagining that on a giant scale and the settings would be absolutely fantastic to see I can like with the pictures from Legends of Room Terror apparently like all the images they look so amazing and to be able to explore those regions I think would be half like a big part of the fun too and just getting to see it and like explore and then fight these massive creatures and demons and stuff i think it would be the best honestly love what like the learning was so fun and like the thought of what this mmo could be was amazing um but yeah that's that's it for this week let me know if there are any more uh videos you want me to see either necrits or any others on league um I don't fully have planned what I'm doing next week, but we'll get some, we'll get something leaguey done. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed and having a great day and I hope to see you in the next one.